UI Toolkit is a new and better way for building UIs for your games and apps. The process is similar to building web UIs and the whole system is a lot more flexible. It also allows you to create styles and much more. I'm in an empty scene and we'll begin by creating the UI document. So right click in the project, create, UI toolkit and create the UI document. This asset will be storing all of the info about how the UI should look like. The main difference in UI toolkit is that the UI is not actually living in the game world scene. Now we will need to apply the UI to the world so that the player can see it, so we'll create new empty object. Add the UI document component on it and we can select that the source asset is the UXML file that we have just created. You can see that we also need to create panel settings, so right click, create, UI toolkit and create the panel settings asset. In here we can specify all of the information about the UI, but the main thing that you should pretty much always change is the scale mode, so we want to set it to scale with screen size, so that the UI is adapting to the screen size. I will set it to match width for height and input full HD. Assign the panel settings to the UI document on the menu UI object that we have created and we should be good to go. Now we can just double click the UXML file and it will open the UI builder for you. So we will be building all of the UI in the UI builder and not in the game world. In the top left part we will have all of our styles, under it we have the hierarchy of all of the objects that are in the UI and then we have some stuff that we can create, for example some visual elements, labels, buttons and more. And then we have the viewport and the inspector of those elements. The first thing that we need to change is the resolution. So select the UXML file in the hierarchy, which is the parent of all of the UI, and just say that you want to match the game view. But because currently the game view is not full HD and we want to create full HD UI, I will just untick that and set the size to full HD. And if you want to see the background as transparent, make sure that you select the Unity default runtime theme. We'll begin by adding some buttons for our menu, so we can just take them from the control step, drag it to the hierarchy or to the menu itself, it doesn't matter, and you can see that we have created a button. You can see that the button is really thin and wide, so you can just change its size, but you will notice that you are not able to move it down. And this is because from default all of the elements are sorted from up to down. So if you'll try adding another button, you can see that they are just stacking on top of each other and we can't move with them. So what we'll do instead is create a parent container in which we'll set that we want to align all of the buttons to the middle and we'll set some spacing between them. So instead of button, we'll add new visual element and we'll scale it across the whole screen. You can also do so in the inspector, so just go under the size and set it whatever you want. Up here in the inspector I will also give it some name, which we'll later use in the script to reference all of the elements. Under the buttons container I will just add few buttons. Sizes of the buttons are all different, but we'll create style later for that. I will select the buttons container, go to the flex, and right now we just want to order them from top to down, so this option is correct. We also go to the align section, and we'll say that we want to align them to the middle, so they are in the middle top part of the screen, and I will select one of these other options that will bring them to the middle of the screen. Also, don't forget to give names to your buttons. And now I will just select one of these that I will customize as I want it to look in the final game. So we can change the size of the button, go to the text, change the text and its size. We can also go to the background part and change the color of the background. And another thing that I like to do is to go to the border and set it some radius so that it is rounded. And to make sure that there is some space between those buttons, as we can't really move them, we need to go to the margin and padding settings and give it some paddings and margin. Currently I'm just giving it some margin, which is the space that is outside of the button, the orange that you can see here. Now we'll create style for the button so that we can easily apply it to all of the other buttons. So I will go to the top left part of the screen and create new USS file. The file is not holding any styles just yet, so I will select the button, go to the style sheet part, style class list, and we can either add the style class to the list or extract inline styles to a new class. The first option means that it will create new empty style for the button and the second option means that it will take all of the options that we set for the button now and it will create style from them. So I will select the second option and don't forget to give it some name. So now we can see name of the class here and we can just easily drag it and put it to our other buttons. 
We can see that the size is not matching even though we set the correct style. This is because on those two other buttons we have already set some inline styles. The inline styles are basically properties that you define individually without setting any style. So the way that we can fix this is just right click and hit unset all. And do it also for the third button. But we obviously want to set the text in the inline style because if we would have the text in the style class then all of the buttons would have the same text. The buttons look alright, now I will just give it some background, so I will select the buttons container, I will set some background color, for that we also need to select some image texture, so I will just select square texture, <coughs> give it some color, and in the margin and padding section I will just give it some margin. And if you don't want to be setting it in pixels, you can also select percentage here. This looks nice for the buttons, so don't forget to save it and go to back to Unity. In the game, we can see all of the buttons as they should be, we can try clicking them, but nothing happens because we haven't coded anything yet, so we will need to create new C -sharp script for that. I will add using Unity Engine.UI elements and create variables for all of the buttons. This way of getting references for all of the buttons inside the script based on the name of the object is not the most optimal, but the only other way that I know of is just instantiating all of the UI through the code. In the void start, we will need to get the root of the UI, so that later from it we can get all of these buttons and other elements. The root is a visual element, so first we need to get the component containing the UI document, and from it we can get the root visual element. And from it we can get all of these buttons. Like this, pretty simple. I will just make sure that all of these names are corresponding to the names that we have in the UI builder, so just go back to Unity, UI builder, and the name that we need is the name that we can see in the hierarchy. So the play button, we can always just copy the name and put it into the script. Next, I will just create a function for each of the buttons, so that we can then do something after we click it. So we have those functions, and don't forget to add the click event as a parameter. Now we can easily register the callbacks on the button, so when we click the play button, we will just run this function. We can register the callbacks on the button just like this, and now we can check if anything happens. And last thing to make this work, don't forget to add the menu UI C -sharp script to the object where you have the UI document component. So I'll press the play button, yep, it says that it is playing the game, go to settings, and quit the game, so everything is working. Now we can create some settings panel, so I'll go back to the UI builder, and first I will just add visual element that will be parent of the settings. At a first glance, it may seem that we can't fit the settings parent and the buttons at the same time because you can see that they just don't fit in here. The way to fix this is to select the settings parent, go to the position and set it to absolute position. And now we can overlay as many elements as we want. We have some bluish background for the settings, but now we can't see the menu, so if you want to see that, just select the settings parent, go to the display and set display to none. In these settings, I would like to have a button on the left and on the right I have the text saying settings. So under the settings background, I will create label container that will be containing the button as well as the text next to it. So we have the settings button as well as a text, but we can see that they are not on the same level. So the way to fix that is to select the label container, go to the flex section and I will say that I want to align them from left to right. And lastly, we can also give some padding and margin to the text. Yep, that seems fine. Now I will just create some settings container that will be containing some sliders, toggles and any other stuff related to these settings. And for rest of these settings, we could use the same principles that we have been using till now. So like this, we could create the whole settings really quickly. Now let's go to the script and just set up so that we can close and open the settings menu. In the script, I have just added a reference for the close settings button, as well as for the visual element, which is the settings parent. I'm getting all of this in the start, and we also have a function on close settings button clicked, which gets fired when we click the close settings button. We want the settings to be closed from the start, so we can just say settings parent dot style dot display equals display style dot none. So like this, we can just turn off the settings, which we'll do on start and also when we press the close settings button. And when we press the settings button, we will set the style to flex. This is just the normal style when you can actually see it. In the code, we obviously have to first get a reference for the settings parent 
and then set it, so I will just put this later in the start. As we start the game, we can see the settings is off. I can try pressing the settings button. We can see the settings, we can move the sliders, take these toggles and do anything else that we have in here. And if we press this button, yep, we can close the settings. So this is how you can create a simple menu using new UI builder. If you would want to access some data from the sliders, toggles and so on, you could do it the same way, just create a reference for the slider and then grab the value from it. Don't forget to check out my Discord, Patreon, I hope that this video was useful. If you have any questions or suggestions, drop them down to the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Bolt tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.